you heard uh, uh, the man there in Wales saying there doesn't seem to be, this government doesn't seem to be interested in saving uh, the plant. There isn't a plan, is there? And the problem is that it's not 15,000, it's not even the supply chain. It's all the local communities as well that will be devastated if there isn't a plan. Well, everybody's going to do whatever they can for the community down there. It is devastating. And you do have to think above all of the uh, what you can do in the interests of not only the thousands of people working there, which you quite rightly say, uh, lots of people living around them. I know South Wales. I often drive past Port Talbot. Drive past uh, it, yeah. Uh, and uh, it, 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 w w it would be a devastating blow if it goes. What about uh, but Tim you do Farrell's have to, point? You what do have to have a serious, yeah. serious plan as to how exactly you're going to save whatever parts of the steel business do have a long-term future. You can't just go in for a knee-jerk reaction of saying we will take it on whatever it costs, we will now have the government losing a million pounds a day and um, we will put more billions of pounds in when a very good company like Tata can't see any future in doing that. Uh, so you Paul do Mason, have to look at it more seriously. Paul Mason, you know, Kenneth Clark is right, isn't it? The government can't simply just pile in a million pounds a day indefinitely. The point about having secretaries of state is not to put yourself in a position where you need to take a knee-jerk reaction. Um, he's been in power for nearly a year and we've seen in the last 48 hours what one man armed with a crazy private ideology that only he seems to believe in and boundless stores of incompetence can do because the man Sajid Javid has destroyed Tata as a potentially market orientated company no, it is I, certain to be nationalized it is certain to be nationalized well, I mean David Cameron said quite clearly you've just heard Kenneth Clark saying you, you, you just well, heard him clutching at straws you just heard Javid saying so maybe it, Tata will sell it to somebody tell us who that is well, tell uh, us Secretary it, of State who the you are in charge of the it industry possible? is it possible to sell it off in bits well, rather than look for a buyer for a global I think company? that is that is logical because you know, nobody wants, and see, Stephen Kinnock is right, nobody wants in their right mind to nationalise something like this because it will take a long-term turnaround plan mm -hmm. to ever get it back into the private sector. But the problem is, Tata Steel is a, is a collection of plants that do different things. You could sell them off or you could even hand them to the workforce as mutuals separately, but, but the most steel industries in the world operate at scale because they need to draw capital from other sources. And simply you know, taking Stocksbridge or Scunthorpe or Port Talbot and making it into a separate business doesn't necessarily secure its long-term future. Um, Kenneth Clark. Um, from a strategic point of view, can you imagine a United Kingdom without a steel industry, a major steel industry? I hope we have a United Kingdom that has a good modern steel industry, which is probably very much in specialised, advanced products being produced at a rate which is competitive. Uh, I mean, it just makes me nostalgic to hear 1960s leftism uh, back in fashion. I mean, I used to hear all this uh, when I was a young man. It was a catastrophe. Uh, and we were closing down steel plants even when we had a nationalised, subsidised British steel. Uh, some of these uh, our plants obviously have a future. We've sold some recently. But why is the there no buyer for these the, ones? Uh, because it's losing a million pounds a day and there's a worldwide collapse in commodity see, prices. We don't know it's uh, and there, is, there, there, is, there is a surplus capacity in the, the Far East but also all over Europe uh, and what you can't do is just say we are going to put whatever however much it takes so, into our steel industry in the hope that other people might close their Is first. there something bigger at play here? Look, first of all let's come back to what Ken Clark just said there. We don't know whether it's losing a million pounds a day, a week, in what sector, in what subsector. Mm -hmm. We need to know. There is a report out there that McKinsey, Stephen Kinnock, the, the union community took a long time to draw up, take to Mumbai. The Tata said it's not good enough. Let's see it. Let's see whether that's a so basis on which we could... So how do you respond to the accusation react. that this is 60s leftism it's all again? Very well and it was national... a disaster before. And it was all very well nationalised, but these industries have actually eventually gone in. It's all very well um, dissing nationalisation until your banking system collapses, isn't it? When, uh, you know, half the banking system of this country and Europe had to be nationalised. Look, Modern leftism, radical leftism, of the kind you heard John McDonnell there mm -hmm. talking about, is not obsessed with nationalisation. It's about shaping the, the market, understanding we are a national market in a global space, and that what companies want is long-term yep. predictability. And Javid cannot give Tata or anybody else long-term predictability because he does not believe in the industry.
Tell me on the question, and Tim Farron mentioned this as well, if the Conservatives supported nationalising the banks, which they did, what is so different about nationalising steel, even taking it for a short term? Now, the banks had to be nationalised because if you don't have a banking system, the rest of the economy collapses. Uh, but, for example, when so Redcar okay closed, when to Red Car closed we, we closed very sadly with great consequences for the community there. But we didn't just leap in. Uh, if you are looking for a future for that part of British steel which has a future, you do have to have people who know something about the steel but industry. But what about the long who game, Who look at Kenneth the international Clark. market yes, what and about decide the long what game? You can hang have on. a future. What, what about the long game? Because we know that China is rationalised, we know that China's steel production is going to go down. Take the long view that maybe we would have to bail out for a period of time and maybe deal with EU rules, but to lose it now would be to lose it forever. China sets out five-year plans and what China has done is said one and a half million people are going to lose their jobs as they make closures of those plants which they don't think have any future and they're looking for alternatives, a more consumer, uh, domestic consumer-based economy to actually build for their future. The, 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 the real way of looking after communities is to actually support and help those that have a prospect of being able to be a success, provide a good living for a generation to but, come. But these if are you get a steel, now, if you get lost. a steel company that wants to buy parts of this plant, they will have done a proper study of it. They won't be based on ideology. They will have decided how they can get costs under control, so, what products have a future, and what market right. they're going to let, sell. Let, let me ask, uh, you know, we had Rolls-Royce, but there was money mm -hmm. put into Rolls-Royce. The government has put money into different things, even at a loss for a while. Do you, even from the mood music came out of David Cameron, refuse to rule out the possibility that he'll nationalise? I think he's going to have to nationalise some or all of those plants because Tata's going to work into a very short timescale. Incidentally, if there's one party that looks after the interest of the Chinese steel worker, it is, of course, the Conservatives, who have wasted nothing in vetoing the tariffs that Europe wanted to put on the Chinese steel that was dumped. And it is that that we know from, Ta from Tata's own statement to the press that was, quote unquote, the last straw in convincing them that the British government had no belief in steel. So yes, we need a long-term plan. We need a government that actually believes in intervening to save strategic industries. And Javid does not believe in doing so. Ken Clark. Uh, we, we've put tariffs on China where they're dumping. We've got agreed European tariffs, but we can't go in for the tariff war. There are hundreds of thousands of jobs in this country which could benefit if we build up our own exports to China. And we are building up our exports to China, a great market for the future. To start engaging in a tariff war with China and excluding their products and then thinking they won't retaliate and take anything to exclude us from China is going back to the 1930s. It's even older and nonsense stuff. And none of these proposals being put forward have anything to do with the real prob problem, which is can someone who can run a steel business identify this business or parts of this business and identify an investment plan, Thank put it back on its feet Thank and make both. it last. There is no ideological or political solution Thank you both that. very much. No I'm real government has any alternative Thank you. That.